Kaloche facing Gabe Kapler. One on. Kapler looking for space, finds it. Jock Jones coming up throwing. Mike Lamb coming hard at the plate, and the throw, well, uh, off target perhaps? Oh my goodness. Big E7 for Jones, 1 0 Rangers. Tied a 1 2 on for Lamb for the love of elevation. Lamb playing for Rafael Palmero. That one coming off Loge, second of the year for Lamb. Nothing sheepish about that. 4-1. Uh, I had to. Rangers pen would hold on. Bottom eight, four, three, Rangers two on. Rudy Cien has struck out the side to keep the lead. All sorts of trouble against the Rangers bullpen. Said Mike Lamb about his performance, which was impressive. I'm not known for hitting homers, so when I do it, I like the feeling. He tied a career high with those three RBIs. Seven strong innings for Kenny Rogers, who said, you want to be the guy who can go out and stop it. He's getting Russell Brannion looking. Travis Fryman watches the hook go by in the fourth. Weaver, no hits through four. Sixth inning we go, Weaver. Helped out on the defensive side. Matt Lawton, he was 0 for 3 in this game. To Randall Simon at first, the flip to Weaver to end the inning. Weaver, the no-hitter through six. Seventh inning, still strong, getting Fryman for the second time in the game to end the seventh. Ten straight retired by Weaver, still no hits. Weaver contemplating between innings. Out firing in the eighth, striking out Brannion for the third time to lead off the inning. Next batter, Nardinez. Pops up to third. We're talking two outs. We're talking 12 down in a row for Jeff Weaver. Next batter, Chris Magruder called up Tuesday to replace Brady Anderson. And wouldn't you know it, Chris Magruder. Magruder and Weaver go way back in their history. More on that in a bit. Craig Paquette just can't get it. Magruder breaks up the no-no with a double. His first hit of the season, Weaver. Disappointed Paquette. Not thrilled with the crowd showing the appreciation for Weaver's effort. Weaver, though, looking for the complete game. One hitter wants to finish the job. Two outs of the ninth and does so against Ellis Burks. Beautiful game for Jeff Weaver. The first one hitter by a Tiger since September 9th, 1997, when Scott Sanderson tossed one against Texas. Said Magruder about breaking up Weaver's no-hit bid. It's pretty bittersweet. You see, Magruder and Weaver room together on Team USA in the 1997 Intercontinental Cup. Wow. They also, yeah, they also played against each other in college, said Weaver. The Red Wings looking pretty yeah. sporty. No, Mag Asiapara did not stat the game, but he would play. John Garland pitching very well. He sits down Shea Hillebrand in the first bottom four. White Sox up one. Garland faces Hillebrand again with a runner in scoring position. He sits him down again. That was Boston's best scoring chance of the night against Garland. Eight innings pitch, three hits, no runs, four Ks. Bottom nine, no more. With two on and nobody out and a swing and a drive, and it's, it's an out on the warning track. Keith Folk on the mound now. There's one out, one batter later. Hillenbrand, chance to play hero. Home run wins it. Ground ball to Jose Valentin ends it. Chicago wins it 2-0 on that great effort from Garland. He retired 24 of the first 25 men he faced, threw only 83 pitches. Still, he's never thrown a complete game, but he does get win number five of the year. Paul Canerco singled and has reached base in 35 of 37 games this season. Ricky Henderson played in his 3,000th game. He's the eighth player to do so, most of any active player. On Roger Clemens' bobblehead doll day, it was Adrian Hernandez head going round and round. The Yanks emergency started hit hard by Toronto. Meanwhile, Jason Giambi, he was two for five in this game with an RBI. Vernon Wells, the throw home, and Nick Johnson, uh, he wants to do that slide over again and gets tagged out by Tom Wilson. Bottom of the seconds, tied at one, bases full for Derek Jeter against Roy Halladay. Jeter, one for five, two strikeouts, he left five on. Before the game, Carlos Delgado described his swing to us. Carlos, go. To get the bat head out front, keep it in front of your body. You don't want to start doing this, because then slow down your swing and your back head is behind you. So you want to attack the ball with your body behind you and the, the head of the bat trying to meet the ball out front. All right, we got you, Carlos. Space is full. There's Carlos Delgado. Oh, so that's what you like mean. Like that. Something like that. So simple. <laughs> Joe Lawrence, Eric Hinsky, Raul Mondesi would all score thanks to Carlos Delgado's double. Blue Jays go on to uh, crush the Yanks. Delgado with his three RBI Wednesday now has 739 of those for his career with Toronto, moving in past Joe Carter for second place on the team's all-time list, one behind George Bell. The Blue Jays had lost 10 of 13 on the road before their victory at Yankee Stadium on Wednesday. Astros cards, Octavio Dotel trying to hold on to it for Roy Oswalt. Astros up two to one. Albert Pujols brings in Fernando Vina, and the game is tied up at two. Lead gone just like that. Top nine, same score. Sacks jammed for the Strohs. Brian Hunter facing Dave Veers. Hunter stings one up the middle, but somehow Veers looking. Where is it? It's right here. He chucks it to first, and Hunter is safe. 
as you'll see. Here's the problem for the Astros. He was called out. Oh, not that again. Jimmy Williams comes out to talk to Tim McClellan. Now bottom nine, J.D. Drew, Ricky Stone, and I am William Wallace. Walk-off home run for the first time ever in J.D. Drew's career, his seventh home run of the year. The card's 17th come from behind win. Speaking of 17, Drew was one for 17. Before that homer, the Redbirds red hot. Eight and one on this 10-game homestand. Excellent pitching continues. Team ERA in the last eight games is under two runs per game. Roy Oswalt for the sixth time in 10 starts gives up one earned run or fewer, but the bullpen did not have his back in this one. Dodgers in Milwaukee. Brewers wearing a version of the 1955 Brewers uniforms in honor of the old Milwaukee Braves. Hey, there's Bob Euchre. He's got a good seat actually standing. Jerry Royster and the Brewers sporting those uniforms. Bottom two, no score. Two on, one out. Paul Bacco. Fly ball. Sean Green. Under it, over it, whatever. Guess who's tagging? Jeff Jenkins. But, you know, Green. You know this. He's got a gun. See? Still scoreless. Top of the third, no score. Who's on first? Adrian Beltre. Green off a of bench sheet. to pitch well, but had a tough luck. Beltre comes around and scores. Green ends up with a triple. It was his only hit in this game, and it was 1-0 Dodgers. Bottom nine, same score, 1-0 Dodgers. Just in case you forgot, two outs. Eric Gagne on the mound facing Jenkins. Strikeout ball game. Dodgers win. Gagne pitched the ninth for his 15th save and 18 chances. Hideo Nomo, four hits, three walks, and seven Ks. Hermanson. Up the middle, Hermanson's only hit of the game. Pryor says he's nervous before this start. He's nervous all the time before any start, but he would settle down. Ask Brian Giles about that. There's some heat for you. Next batter, Aramis Ramirez. There's that wicked curve we've heard about. Strong start for Mark Pryor. Still cruising in the third with the Cubs up 2-1. Striking out Hermanson with that curve. Next batter, Jack Wilson. Still looking for that. Two batters later. Ramirez up again. He's chasing it now. Three innings, six Ks for Mark Pryor against the Pirates. 2-1 Cubs. Let's think about Sammy right now. It's all about Sammy Sosa, who owns David Williams. Major League leading 17th home run of the year for Sammy. Second in as many games. Cubs lead 3-1. Top of the six, Giles. He had a big day. This one coming off of Pryor. Giles had three hits in the game. Giles is ninth home run of the year. Pirates trail five to two. Next batter, Pryor all over Ramirez. This time with the heat. Yeah, Pryor just keeps going. What a great debut for Mark Pryor. Living up to those expectations. Six innings, two runs, four hits, and 10 Ks. Cubs win. Pryor does what Kerry Wood could not win his Major League debut with Chicago. And at the age of 21, he becomes the youngest pitcher to start and win his Major League debut as a Cub since Tony Kaufman, that's with two N's, back in 1921. Sosa, in his last 11 games against the Pirates at Wrigley, eight homers, 19 RBIs, a 4-17 on him later. No score runner on. Ryan Dempster walks Sean Casey. Runners now at first and second. Next batter, Dempster facing Adam Dunn. Dunn walks. Next batter, Austin Kearns, the rookie. Dempster gets Kearns swinging a day after he hit his first career grand slam. Dempster still in the bases loaded jam. Trainers come out, take a look at his hand. He aggravated a blister on his thumb. They leave him in. Full count, Todd Walker. That's deep. First career grand slam. Rethinking that move? 4 nothing Reds. Bottom eight, Walker up again. Are you kidding me? Second home run of the game for Todd Walker. No doubt. Reds win. They also have four grand slams in May, a team record for one month. Marlins 2-7 and seven now on a 14-game road trip. That's the longest in team history. The Marlins dropped to 23-23. and 23. First time they've been back to 500 since the 4th of May. The Angels, the Devil Rays, though, are doing some damage. Jason Conti brings John Flaherty home. Conti ends up at second, and the Devil Rays won game one of the series, up one up. Top three, same score. Jason Smith. Foul, it's a strike, but it's that. It's a home run, just like Barry Bonds, only for Smith, it's not 16. It's, it's number one. Bottom five. Two-nothing D-Rays. Ichiro 
Chris Gomez makes a heads-up play. Ruben Sierra scores, but he throws behind Mike Cameron. Mariners, though, within one run. Bottom seven. Ichiro strikes out swinging. Mr. Sambrano sits him down. That is not easy to do. And the Devil Rays, don't look now, they won four in a row. And the Mariners have dropped four in a row, matching last year's season-long streak. The first time since July of 1994, Seattle's been held to two runs or fewer in four straights. And that blip in the rear view that Seattle sees coming on strong, it's Anaheim. And Paul Bird. And Paul Bird had a lead because Mike Sweeney to the land of the lost. Now that's definitely where the sleeve stacks live. It's 4 0 Royals. Sweeney's seventh home run. Now in the fifth. Spezio at the dish. Donnie Sadler on the case. Donnie Sadler's on the case. What a grab. Backing up Paul Bird. One more look at that grab. Bird 3 0. 0 0.86 ERA is last year. He starts, but now Bird out of the game in the bottom of the eighth. The Angels down 5 to 2. Darren Erstad up with two on. Erstad smokes one down the line. Orlando Palmero, Adam Kennedy come in to score, and we are tied up at 5. Mike Sosha is happy, and I think we all know what's going on here. Yes, yeah, it's, it's about the monkey. It's all about the monkey. Rally Monkey is working, and Garrett Anderson's bat is too. He is 2 for 4 in the game. He's got a double to right field. The Angels take a 7 to 5 lead. We're down five love in this game. Comes storming back with those bats once again. Top nine. He's squinting and he's throwing gas. Troy Percival. That's it. That's all. Angels win it. Seven, two, six. The five-run deficit, the largest overcome to win for Anaheim this year. Aaron Erstad only had that one hit, but it was a big one. He's batting 386 in the last 10. The Angels have won eight in a row at home. A's daytime baseball. A's up 2-1, two, 2-1. One, two, one. Larry Sutton just called up. Calvin Maduro said they're a high fastball hitting team, and I left the fastball up all day. Sutton knows what to do with it. His first home run, the A's up 5-1. Top three Orioles with one on, two outs. Chris Singleton pops it up. Eric Chavez fighting the sun, and the sun wins. It's ruled a hit. Singleton's got an 11-game hitting streak, and he's 16 of his last 33. Watch it again. It hits off his glove and hits him in the chest. Chavez, okay. He was okay. Billy Koch, better than that. Good night. Ryan McGuire strikes out to end the game, and the A's hold on to win it. 7-6. to six. The New Look A's win for just the fourth time in 18 games and snap a four-game losing streak. Only needs one homer. There he is. Is he thinking about it? Ah, no one, Barry. You can never tell. Earlier in the game, though. Oh, goodness, we've got a problem. Danny Batista dives trying to get a Benito Santiago looper, and he had to leave the game. Strange shoulder. Giants up one love. Here comes Bonds. We've got the shift on, and he is absolutely robbed on this 3-0 pitch. Tony Womack starts it. That's a 6-5-3 double play. That's rare. Robbed by the shift. Brian Anderson does not want any part of him. He walks him. Next batter, Jeff Kent. This is the danger in walking Bonds. Kent, with a bat, can do a few things. Over Steve Finley's head. Kent with the RBI double. We are tied up at three. Bottom of the fifth, same score. Spivey man. Junior Spivey, not anymore. Are we tied? This is no doubt. D backs lead the National League with 56 home runs. Spivey has five of them, but we're going to talk about home runs. Let's talk about David Bell and. Bow, chicka, wow, bow. Wait a minute. You're not the regular cool boy. That's his second home run of the day, his eighth of the year. He's got four in his last five games. In the sixth, this is what history looks like. High and fair. Home run, Barry Bonds, one more time. Not a lot to say, just enjoy the view. Barry does. The man is unbelievable. 583, and Barry gives thanks. And the Giants rolling in the ball game, incidentally. Now in the seventh, well, it's all falling apart, clearly. He pops up. It says weekly on the shot sheet. I'm not about to say anything weak about no this way. man. Gonna have to wait to pass Big Mac. The Giants explode for 17 hits and score 12 runs, but it's all about Bonds. He only had one hit. It was the home run. He is hitting 414 with five homers in the last nine games, and Bonds snapped a six-game homerless drought at the Bob, which was his longest active homerless drought at any stadium. Auto taking on the rocks and some great D behind him. Todd Zeal. Well, he starts it. D'Angelo Jimenez actually started it. It's 463. DP. Bottom five tied at three. Todd Helton this time. To Jimenez, he steps on second. Pods turn three double plays in the first five. Top seven, still tied at threes. Davy Cruz to shallow right, and Helton gets some revenge. He makes the grab. 
Throws to second and doubles up Trinidad Hubbard. Colorado had two double plays of the row. Bottom eight, still knotted at threes. Man on second, Brett Butler. Stings one down the line. Mark Little, pinch runner, comes in. A double for Butler. The Rockies would add an insurance run and hold on to win it. Top of the Rocks order, eight knocks. Larry Walker, three for three. The winning ways at Coors continue. They've won 12 of their last 15 at home. Brian Lawrence gives north of the border with a not one nothing lead in the top of the fourth. This is not good news. Gary Sheffield, it's not the ground out. It's, it's that right there. Going to have his hamstring looked at in Atlanta on Thursday. Top five, man on first, nobody out. Jose Vidro, unbelievable play. And that's a 4-6-3. That's amazing. Now on the ninth, Tom Glavin's parents, they're watching the game. What are they looking at? I don't it's know. a bat! No way! It's a ball. Oh. I was kidding. Glavin in the ninth. In the gap to left center. Can Andrew catch up with it? A diving catch and yes. the game! Andrew Jones wow. does it again with a tremendous diving grab. What a catch. Yeah, wow is right. Tom's parents didn't get hit by a ball. Atlanta wins 2-0. Glavin throws the Braves' first complete game since he tossed one last September the 2nd. It's his 22nd career shutout. He has 11 starts on the year and has given up two runs or fewer in nine of them. All four Montreal hits came from the top three in the order. Jose Vidro had one of them. Continued their shake-your-head shake-up by trading outfielder Jeremy Giambi to the Phillies for John Mabry. Yeah. John Mabry, who the Phillies primarily used as a pinch hitter. Giambi was stunned by the move. Said Phil's GM Ed Wade about obtaining Jeremy. Right away, he becomes second on our team in homers with eight. Giambi did join the team Friday. Wednesday night, the Phillies took on the Mets. And when you're thinking Mets and talking Mets, Pat Burrell, he loves the Mets. A two RBI double, this one off of Al Leiter. 35 RBIs and 31 games for Burrell in his career against the New York Metropolitans. Two nothing Phillies. Top of the second, Ray Ordonez up with runners on first and second. Ordonez, two for four in this game. Here's one of his hits. Now, Jeremy Burnitz will try to score, but um, I'm not sure what Jay Payton's doing. He's getting thrown out of third before Burnitz can cross the plate. That's not bright. Take another look. We see Doug Glanville, his throw to third, nailing Payton, which was bright, before Burnitz can score. Jay Payton, that's too bad. He's angry. He's ticked off. He had three hits in this game, but the Phillies had a victory, 5-2. to two. Third straight win for the Phillies. They're 10-1 at the bet this month, but 4-18 on the road, tied with Detroit for worst in the majors. Said skipper Larry Boa, I don't know what it is, I can't explain it. The Phillies are now just four back of the Mets in the NL East.